don't know what is okay 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 guys sorry my internet went off somehow <laughs> okay so just uh, we were at the end of the session only okay so quickly i'll just start it from where we started yeah okay so can you hear me guys yeah Okay, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, guys, let's quickly start now. So, yes. So we were at the last point only. So my uh, internet somehow got disconnected. Okay. So now let's quick. Where were we? So we were here. Yeah. So I was just showing you what are the findings we are supposed to see in all the find all the uh, just a recap of hairy cell leukemia. So remember in electron microscopy. Uh, so first. 100% of hairy cell leukemia patients shows BRAF mutations. So who's going to tell me which are the other conditions where you see BRAF mutations? Quickly. So which are the other conditions where you see BRAF mutations? So I hope you remember that BRAF mutation is like, you know, God is Durga. It has so many arms. So there are so many mutations associated with BRAF. Okay. So what are the total uh, conditions which are associated with BRAF? So remember 100% of hairy cell leukemia, which you just now saw. So right opposite of HCL, that is LCH. So Langerhans cell histiocytosis is another condition where you see BRAF mutation. Apart from that, you should remember papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay, papillary carcinoma of thyroid and pilocytic astrocytoma. So here is the catch, okay? So everybody should remember the most common mutation in BRAF normally is V600E. So in pilocytic uh, astrocytoma, the mutation is seen in the BRAF only. But it is different uh, point mutation. The point mutation there is different, okay? So that's another update which came up recently. So this everybody has to know, okay? Apart from that, colon cancer and melanoma. Colon cancer and melanoma also has BRAF mutations. So everybody should remember six cancers with BRAF mutation at least, okay? Uh, so everybody should remember, so 100% of hairy cell leukemia have BRAF B600E, that is where valine is replaced by glutamic acid. Okay, apart from that, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, papillary carcinoma of thyroid, pilocytic astrocytoma, colon cancer and melanoma. Please remember, in pilocytic astrocytoma, it is a different mutation altogether. Okay, so that's about pathogenesis. Now, now let's come to the you know uh, what will you see in the bone marrow so obviously the bone marrow typically has fibrosis so because of the fibrosis there are reticular fibrosis and these cells have hairy projections so because of the hairy projections the there will be there will be a halo around these cells so they will typically show you a honeycomb appearance or a fried egg appearance so they show you a characteristic fried egg appearance because of these hairy projections so nothing will come close to them so these cells appear to lie in a lacuna okay Okay, this is what is called as a fried egg appearance okay so that is seen in the bone marrow biopsy remember where there is this is seen in bone marrow biopsy whereas if somebody asks you what will you see in bone marrow aspirate remember bone marrow aspirate will be a dry tap because of fibrosis no cells could be aspirated so it will be a dry tap therefore you always have to undergo a bone marrow biopsy in these cases which shows you a fried egg appearance 
and of course we know that in peripheral blood finding so i'm going oppositely because this is according to the question that we said i have already told you the case the case typically presents with pancytopenia and it also has monocytopenia so remember monocytopenia is very characteristic in hairy cell leukemia because of which these patients typically have atypical mycobacteria infections that's very very characteristic so sometimes they give you this as a question itself so a patient present elderly patient presenting with atypical mycobacteria infections and pancytopenia always look for hairy cell leukemia okay now if you have to confirm these hairy cells you can go for face contrast microscopy where these hairy cells will be very well seen but if you do an electron microscopy you will see ribosomal lamellar complexes okay now spleen involvement is nearly seen in 100% of the cases of hairy cell leukemia and in contrast to the other leukemias in hairy cell leukemia red pulp is involved so here you see a very very characteristic finding what is this this is called pseudocinesis that is you will see blood spaces filled lined by hairy cells so these are called as pseudocinesis lined by hairy cells so this is what is pseudocinesis so these are this blood filled spaces lined by hairy cells so these are called pseudocinesis formations which are very characteristic splenic finding in hairy cell leukemia so let's look at the other so if you look at the bone marrow biopsy you will see that all these cells have a clear space around them so this is what is called as fried egg appearance what is this called as fried egg appearance. parents whereas if you look at if you put up if you want to confirm that bone marrow is fibrous you put reticulin stain so if you put up a reticulin stain you will see that whole of the bone marrow is fibrous who is going to tell me what is this what is this so remember in the bone marrow the sinusoids of the bone marrow are always collapsed okay so the first finding okay one of the earliest finding of fibrosis in the bone marrow is that whenever the fibrosis starts it pulls open the sinusoids so sinusoids will appear open so whenever even without putting a reticulin stain stain if i ever see that the sinusoids are pulled open that gives me a clue that this patient is having fibrosis in the marrow and then immediately i order reticulin stain okay so reticulin stain for seeing fibrosis whereas if you look at the electron microscopy i have already showed you it shows you ribosomal lamellar complexes okay so everybody quickly so just remember this so the now the so remember the case which i again went through quickly we'll go through this case so this is a 55 year old male presenting with massive splenomegaly and that is why he has dragging and fatigue sensation so uh, remember so he presents he sends the sam uh, sends the patient sample to the pathologist where he show pancytopenia remember sometimes they can give you monocytopenia or atypical mycobacteria infection that is a strong clue to a hairy cells okay remember these bizarre looking cells if ever you see these are hairy cells and you should always put up a special stain which is trap so today we are just focusing on two questions which two stains which we have taken as pass and acid phosphatase so these two stains should be very clear to you and these are typical questions that can be asked to you okay apart from that remember when we'll go to leukemia then we will see nowadays you know instead of special stains we always prefer putting up you know a flow cytometry for uh, or immunophenotype for hairy cell leukemia and everybody should remember they are typically positive for cd11 c cd25 cd103 cd123 and xna1 and dba44 so these are the markers which can be positive in hairy cell leukemia so that's your hairy cell leukemia which everybody has to be clear with okay so that was your 2 minute session uh, two questions basically which everybody should be knowing okay so that was your two questions okay so take home messages okay so what are the take home messages okay right okay so take home messages today here is one point that you have to always remember is pass stain okay pass is a very good stain for glycogen and uh, so which all leukemias can be pass positive if i'm asking you which all leukemias can be pass positive what is the answer to this which all leukemias can be pass positive quickly it is it is quick 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 pass positive so it depends upon the pattern of positivity if it is blot dot and blot positivity you have to say that it is all if it is diffuse positivity aml m6 and m7 a good internal control is neutrophil a cytoplasmic blush is seen in apml okay then you remember acid phosphatase acid phosphatase is present in all the hematopoietic cells but the 
pattern of positivity is very very important if it is polar positivity your answer should be acid phosphatase if it is trap positive it has to be hairy cell leukemia and hairy cell leukemia everybody has to know each and everything about hairy cell leukemia presents with pancytopenia with massive spleen okay and because why there is a massive spleen because you know the spleen is always involved here and bone marrow is fibrosed okay if you look at the bone marrow you will see that there is fibrosis in the bone marrow which can be documented by reticulin state or if you want to put uh, if you have to see uh, uh, but if you do bone marrow aspirate it will be dry tap you have to do a bone marrow biopsy on which you can put reticulin stain and it will show you a fried egg, a fried egg appearance okay of course if you do an electron microscopy you will be seeing ribosomal lamellar complexes if you do phase contrast microscopy you will be seeing hairy projections well okay nowadays remember immunophenotyping is done and you have to remember the markers of hairy cell leukemia apart from from that everybody should be seeing the spleen finding in hairy cell leukemia which is called pseudo sinus formations which are very very characteristic okay so that is your two question session so we'll meet tomorrow again with another two questions so everybody should be very 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 clear with this okay right okay guys bye bye and sorry for the interruption of the session this was because of my internet problem okay right okay guys bye bye